Alright guys, today I'm going to show you basically how to create a quest, a basic quest, using the story manager and one of the events in the story manager. Now I'm doing this mostly because when you look at any information about the story manager, there really doesn't seem to be a lot of in-depth information about it. If you go to, for example, the, the um, creation kit wiki, it's really just a rundown of uh, something that's already made so it, it seems like a lot of people just don't really know how to make it or explain it because if that were the case it, it would be there but anyway th that's why I'm doing this um, and that's mostly directed at the people who are waiting or looking into Unreal Engine tutorials which I'm gonna be doing more of that later and more Unreal Engine 4 tutorials uh, but anyway Let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to be explaining what exactly this is if you don't know what this is as we do it. We're going to be making um, a change location event. And uh, basically, if you don't know what the story manager is, um, in Skyrim, anything from random conversations that NPCs have to anything really dynamic, dynamic events, and anything that sort of occurs out of another event or something like that is somehow linked to the story manager. Um, so for instance, in the case of actors, their AI packages do um, mark them for random conversations, but it is the scenes within these quests marked as actor dialogue that actually, you know, run the dialogue and what and etc. So what we're going to do is right click on the top on this change location event and we're going to select new branch node. Now what this is is basically a, a form of organization but the reason why there are branches and then quest nodes under those branches and then quests under those is because a lot of these nodes have similar properties especially if it's something like a, 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 a very intimate storyline, um, a very intricate setting or something like that, then it would probably be best for a developer to make a new branch and then set set similar conditions for that branch and then under that we're talking about different conditions under there. So obviously as you can see in some cases it, this creates a very complex net which is where you usually get the, the immersive sense of some of these dynamic events in Skyrim. But uh, all we're going to be doing is creating a new branch node. And um, it doesn't pop up like anything normally does, you're going to have to find it. So it's right there, I already created another one. Um, but I'm just going to go through this with you. And under that we're going to create a new quest node. Now like I said before, um, this is basically a subdivision of the branch node that actually contains the quest and the reason being is because we have this called shares event uh, and what that does is once once this event is called once you change location or whatever thing changes location it runs through this whole list and if it finds something it, it triggers it it fires it up uh, if the conditions are met now it's usually stops after that um, but the reason why Another reason why these branch nodes exist is for this shares event because this is going to continue on and say it fires this up well it's going to continue on and not stop if that's checked. Random or stacked is... Random is really useful in cases of something like that dialogue. So like the NPCs will engage in a random dialogue so it doesn't seem really really static and really generic. Uh, we're going to select stack for now. What, what stacked is, it, it just basically is literally a stack. It goes one, two, three, four, five, etc. down once it once it fires the event. Okay, and under that we're going to add our quest. Now we haven't added our quest yet. Well I have, but I'm going to go through it again with you. So usually you're just going to put new quest here and go to quest data soon after you um, select new quest 
And if you'll notice, the primary thing about this is that we're changing the event from none to change location event. That's going to make it uh, impossible to select the start game enabled because, of course, it's not. And if you're looking for something that that's going to be recurring, you don't you want to uncheck run once. And that's really all you need to do. If this is a real quest, you're going to want to. Um, click side quests or miscellaneous or something set it in a type but I also want to point out one other thing is that if you use a tracer to log certain booleans in the uh, event log you'll notice that some of the booleans are false that are usually true for a quest like this um, and it's not be or some like it's be not being tracked or something like that uh, you wouldn't normally have to do that but for maybe like a dynamic quest you might want to set it to active like um you know set active true to for the player to track it and uh check if it's running it but that's not that's not necessary what we're also going to do though is we're going to make a scene uh with our quest just to show you how this can uh, be useful for making a scene so once you have all that press okay and then we're going to go back here and under your stacked quest node you're gonna put you're gonna click add quest okay and I uh, have already done that now this is the important part what we need is what happens when this event is fired is data comes along with it think of it not in terms of a, a scripting terminology but think of it as, as being logged so some information gets logged like the old location, new location, etc. We're going to um, set a new lo a condition for this get is ID and mind you this isn't the you know regular get is ID this is get event data. So find that then find get is ID new location or old location. I don't know what you're doing but you can do either one. And I'm going to set mine to white run location. So you can set it to whatever location you want. And once it goes through, that's that's where the event is going to fire. So once you have that, make sure to run it on the player and not subject. Uh, press OK. And um, that's really all you need to do here. You don't need to have any other conditions. Again, the reason why these are up here is, is for similar quest nodes and similar quests uh, but for a basic quest we just need one condition like this and, and that's fine now if you notice the random conversations NPCs have are actually almost entirely based on scenes okay I'm gonna create an, a scene just to show you that uh, this is effective for pretty much making anything quote happen um, in game anything from special events to making NPCs do whatever okay and uh, this is where you actually need aliases um, so I'm gonna create a new alias real quickly and I'm going to because I already have it in there um, link it to my NPC that I already have there Okay, and if you don't have that, uh, maybe you're you're not doing this part. Maybe you just want to um, make a, a quest that starts according to an event. Well, that's fine, and you can even do the same thing uh, without going to an event. Okay. Now you can use any if you're following along. You can really use any NPC to do this as long as they don't already have special conditions attached to them or anything like that. I'm not going to go over re um, aliases because it, I'm assuming that you you have gone over that to create because this is more of a uh, somewhat intermediate. I wouldn't call it intermediate, but it's a more intermediate method of creating a quest. So uh, once you have your alias up, I'm going to go back to scene and I'm going to go ahead and set up my scene I'm just gonna make him um, do something really weird 
I don't know if there's a new package. I'm not going over anything like like packages or AI or anything like that. I'm just setting up a scene. So just consider this um, sort of run through. I'm assuming that you have some experience with this. Um, okay. And remember what we're doing is once the quest has been started through the, the story manager, then this scene is going to run. And that's usually actually how any scene um, gets to running in these story managers. You can put stop quest on end. This is usually for the quests that that are actually just dialogue or, or some special event. So, uh, you know, once you get into this, don't think of quests as quests. Think of them more as as uh, data storage, because that's really what it actually is with respect to what is really going on behind the scenes. Okay. Okay, so anyway, if you have that issue, uh, all you have to do is exit out of the quest and uh, open it again and, and it does that. But this is just gonna be an object reference because I'm just uh, handling uh, basic fu uh, movement functions. So, and again, this is just sort of an aside that, that combines the usefulness of the story manager. Um, so I'm going to move our NPC to the player's location. It's going to look silly, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because this is just an example. Uh, and yeah, that's all we need. Okay, so here I am in Skyrim. I'm waiting for the event to fire because usually what happens, especially in the cases of people with a lot of mods and a very, very loaded, overloaded, if you will, uh, save game where you have just a bunch of information and you know you, you decked out your character and everything. Some events will, will behave oddly and some won't fire immediately once you change location. So you might have to wait a little bit in, in that case. But that's not usually having to do with your mod. It's, it has to do with another mod that's, that's interrupting that or something like that. But as you can see, ours works because not only does um, our NPC move as the, the scene told it to, but we also uh, have the, the quest actually start. That's another one that I was using. And if you haven't met him, this is... Yes, Scorpion, the uh, gender confused, uh, not from, from I guess, like uh, God knows where, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a few more tutorials on on, Scott, on Creation Kit, but I'm trying to focus, like I said, again on, on Unreal Engine, so I will be releasing more Unreal Engine tutorials just to be able to say that, you know, I'm, I'm balancing that out, so thanks for watching.